all right, we all know the first rule of deck building, right? If at first your brew doesn't succeed, wait for a broken new card to get printed, and then try again. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video. Funding for today's video comes from Nicholas S., who wanted to go and see a Dealer's Choice donation deck list. And every time that happens, I go and find some wonderful jank. And today we are going to be playing Urabrask's Forge in Legacy. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, put an oil counter on Urabrask's Forge. Then create an X1 red Phyrexian horror creature token with Trample and Haste, where X is the number of oil counters on this thing, and sacrifice the token at the beginning of the next end step. So this thing accomplishes two roles here. Number one, this is a card that is going to be a pain in the butt for a control deck to play against. Um, I'm probably going to make myself sound like a magic boomer here, but you remember playing against something like Assemble the Legion, that um, enchantment, the Boros one, that just makes like soldiers and increasingly more soldiers every turn? It's like one of those, but it costs three mana instead. So if you are going to like turn 10 in a game and you play this on turn one, this can be a lot of damage just on its own. But more realistically, that's not what we're looking to do. This is a deck built around Fireflux Squad. When it attacks, you may exile another target attacking creature you control. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Now, this is a card that I've tried to make work a couple of times on this channel. First time, eh, it kind of fell on the face, on its face. The second time, I played it with Winota, and Winota was the stronger of the two effects by quite a bit. But this time around, we have better enablers, like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Urabrask's Forge gives us a lot of creatures that aren't technically creatures that we can floop into. And so the lowest hit we have off a of Fireflux squad is another Fireflux squad. And from there, we start getting into Furies, Atraxa, told you that card was going to see play everywhere, uh, even Archon of Cruelty or Emrakul. And the backup plan for these large cards here is just straight up a sneak attack. So there are some very strange lines available with the sneak attack. So like, let's say, you know, we just play a turn one sneak attack past the turn. On turn two, we have like two red mana. We can get a fire flux squad and a fury, wipe out the opponent's board, attack with both, trigger Fire Flux Squad, change the Fury into something else, maybe wiping out more creatures or putting an Atraxa into play, and then like whatever we put in with Fire Flux Squad doesn't have that same sacrifice restriction that the creature from Sneak Attack would be. Um, so we can maybe do some very wild things very quickly. Um, we also are playing two cards that usually don't quite make the cut in the Legacy Mono Red mana bases, so Kenzon, Crucible of Defiance. It's a red producing legendary land, and for four mana, you can discard it to create two 1-1 one, one colorless spirit creature tokens. They gain haste until end of turn. And it costs less for each legendary creature we control, although um, we've got legendary creatures. I don't know that we really need that land anymore. Um, yeah, so as far as the sideboard goes, it's relatively stock stuff here. Although this deck is opting to play Surgical Extraction over Leyline of the Void, I'm not sure that I exactly know why. Like, Leyline is relatively good. This is something that's going to dodge hate um, for someone immediately saying, Why don't you play Fairy? This is the answer. Like, turning your Fireflux Squad activation into a Fairy is relatively embarrassing. So this was probably someone who said, I don't want to just have too many things that are vulnerable to, say, a Serenity effect, because, like, we have even more than a normal mono red deck would, and so they opted for Surgical over Leyline. Uh, most of the rest of the stuff that's here is pretty normal, although a whopping three copies of Fiery Confluence is definitely a statement about what this person was worried about. Um, I think this was a top 16 deck list from a Japanese event uh, played by Keita Kishino, and uh, I'm excited to try this one out. A, a fan actually sent this in and was like, hey, Phil, if you're looking for a deck list to play for a dealer's choice, consider this. 
well consider it considered let's hop into the matches if you're new here and you like what you see please consider subscribing and if you're a regular throw me a like before this video begins it is the easiest way to support my content for free let's battle yes i will be keeping this hand we're hoping blood moon is good against this opponent because if it's not i need a second creature to really do anything all right blood moon is respectable um that's fine that Thoughtseize doesn't actually disrupt me from casting a Blood Moon. Um, notably, the wording here is this is another target attacking creature. It can't do itself. That is a Blood Moon going down the drain. Now, what this tells me is that my opponent is going to try to counter the first one. So what I'm actually going to do here is play this first one around days. I'm going to go ahead and put this sneak attack under here and cast this around days. All right, we're in play. And then next turn, most of the time I can be attacking with a 4-3 and starting to try and close this game. Okay, uh, we are probably playing against Death Shadow here. I guess days is no longer on. So let's go ahead and just play a fable. That's going to give me relatively important treasure tokens. I can then use that to cast Fire Flux Squad. All right, uh, we're chilling. I'll absolutely use this ability. I think I'm going to pitch these two. All right, uh, that's another Fable. That's totally fine. A little short on mana here to just, like, instantly win the game with Fire Flux Squad. But I don't know that I really need to worry about that when my opponent is just locked out of mana sources, and I am making two treasures a turn. Okay, one treasure a turn. Arctide Regent, the pitch there, by the way. That's a card that's just never happening. All right, cool. The uh, Blood Moon games do slow me down a little bit, but not enough to really be noticeable. This is the rare post-combat Fire Flux squad, because I needed the extra mana. Uh, and then next turn, it's very hard for my opponent to not be dead. Aww, I, I, want, I wanted to do the thing. So there's a lot of ways that I can sideboard for this matchup. It seems to me that the easiest ways that I lose this matchup are to either a very large Marktide Regent or a very large Death Shadow just hitting me a couple of times. I don't think I really want to be on the taxation route when I am on the draw. And looking at the cards that I want to bring in, those directly clash with Chalice of the Void. I think those slots are coming out for these. And since I boarded in a bunch of removal, I think I'm going to go ahead and board down one Fury. Note here that I think there's a valid alternative sideboard plan of fire a death laser at my opponent's face. Like, Fiery Confluence for 6 damage to my opponent's face after they damage themselves with their Thought Seizes and stuff is, like, very real. I think if I had more, like, Legion War Boss type stuff, I would be very willing to go down that route. But I think I'm going to go ahead and submit as is here. This is missing a red mana. Uh, I think this is an Auto Mulligan. Yeah, I think I'll keep this pitching the Fury. I am not 100% sure what I will Chrome Mox. I may not even have the choice. Like, my opponent may just play Thoughtseize here. Okay, they do. Uh, from their perspective, I would be taking Chrome Mox, but I don't know their hand. I don't know, they can also just take my Shatter Skull Smashing. Like, that kind of accomplishes a similar thing. Okay, yep, yeah, they, they did that. New Shatter Skull Smashing. Um, quick rules note, Chrome Mox exiles a non-artifact, non-land card, so it can't actually imprint these, just FYI. That is very much something that matters. I do not want this Chrome Mox dazed in any circumstance. I am thinking about paying three life this turn to do this. I can pay three life next turn just as easily. I'm going to go ahead and Chrome Mox here. I think I imprint the Dead Gone, despite it being a sideboard card here. And I think I don't risk tapped Shatter Skull Smashing here. Just too bad versus Wasteland. 
that's like awkward leaving this in hand versus another Thoughtseize effect. Sure. All right, that's no shuffle there. Uh, Fury's not a very good draw. I will pay the life for this. These are basically susceptible to the same things. This one's a little bit worse versus counter magic, but better versus something like Snuff Out. I think I'm going to play the thing that's better versus Snuff Out. All right, it's in play. So combat happens. I get an oil counter. I get a 1-1 one -one that I can attack with. Send it on in. This may be working towards a Death Shadow for my opponent. And then I sacrifice this token. I'll just kind of see where this goes. I would say that I think I am in the worst position of the two of us here. Let's just go ahead and oil counter it up. Yield to that. One, then two, then three, then four, and so forth. On it goes to 12. I'll play a Fable. The treasure token's starting to matter quite a bit. I don't really expect this to resolve. Yeah. And end of turn, I sack the token. I guess kind of the ideal for me would be my opponent playing like a very small Death Shadow that I can just Fury. I've got some choices. I think I'm going to start by trying to resolve this and see how my opponent fights over it. Because if they spend mana fighting over this, they might not have the mana to do something else, like say Brazen Borrower bounce this. Okay, Force of Will pitching Marktide Regent. That is acceptable for me. Now I get my token. We're up to a lightning bolt worth of damage. Okay, uh, and th at this point my opponent has used a removal spell as a counter spell for a lightning bolt, uh, which is fine for me. Then I've got like four next turn. All right, that is a Merktide Regent. Hopefully one that I can just kill with a Fury. A shame my good spell didn't resolve. Fury's four damage. Fury's four damage. That's a very relevant number right now. I will launch in for four damage with this. My opponent will block. Then I'll see if they have another counter spell. Yep, yep, yep. So damage is marked on that. Show me your counter spell. Real good if you have it. Ooh, you don't. That is lethal damage at Merktide Regent. Uh, this card's better than I was expecting it to be. The next turn, I am just attacking for lethal. All right, here is the Hail Mary Brainstorm trying to fix this current scenario. Yeah, I wonder if my opponent had the daze. They dazed my fable the following turn. Like, I wonder if they had it and just went, that's too slow, that's not going to matter. Then, like narrator's voice, it was not too slow. It did matter. Ooh. Free combat? Or do I let my opponent tap a bunch of stuff, interact with my things? I think because of Fatal Push, I just do this now. All right, attempt Blood Moon. Rest down. Okay, I mean, that saves my opponent three points of life this turn. Oh, actually, it's going to remove the haste on these tokens, isn't it? Yeah, it removes the haste. Yeah, uh, that was very good for my opponent. That saved them eight life, uh, which is literally a lethal amount of damage. So they can't, like, Death Shadow now. They can't Merktide Regent now. They're going to need, like, a Brazen Borrower Bounce to get out of this. Okay, there it is. Oh, no, they're just pondering. All right, we're done. Uh, yeah, this card is super cool. Um, GG's. All right, round two. I think I keep this hand. How I play it is more interesting here. A, a big portion of this is like, do I just play Fable on turn one in an attempt to sometimes play Fireflux Squad if I draw a Soul Land on turn two? I'm always playing this. I'm always playing this. I think Archon goes under here. And then it's just like, do I want to Chalice? Go ahead and throw a pedal into play now. I think I will slow roll this game a little bit because this protects my Fable token from like Swords to Plowshares, Lightning Bolt, all that sort of stuff. It's a little awkward if I get like Wastelanded. Does a Once Upon a Time. Play Allosaur Shepherd, fuck your Chalice. That's a forest. Okay, it was Cavern of Souls instead. Uh, all right. 
So we'll uh we'll probably board Jalice out in this matchup. We'll see. Um I save that for a turn, I think. I think given my model my mana bottleneck, it is just too important for me to just accept the one for one here. Like I can often get two or three creatures depending on exactly what's going on over there. There's another Elvish Reclaimer. Uh wow, this turn got tough, because I can just fire flux squad and do the thing. Or I can just like be disciplined, play Fury, get my two for one. I believe the correct play is play Fury this turn. I will not do that for the sake of content. Let us spin the roulette wheel of death and see what beautiful thing happens. So I'll attack. Target this. I can still cast the Fury next turn. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh fuck. Okay. Um creature. Artifact. Enchantment. Land. Do I want? Robrasque's forge instead of Lotus Petal, actually. That's mountain. Or one, two, three, four. Yes. Okay. 11 incoming damage, and I still get to Fury. And Fury again next turn. And it's life linky. Uh, exile Blood... Exile or Breast Forge. Uh, exile Blood Moon. I think we're in garbage time where it doesn't matter. Two damage to both of those. Absolutely fucking disgusting. Uh, gamble paid off. Now I just can't imagine any world where I do not win this game. Is just lethal on board already. Holy fuck. All right, the play for content ended up working out. But then there's other times where I just hit Fire Flux Squad instead, and it's like, oh, eight damage, then my opponent played Cradle and Natural Ordered me. All right, GTFO Chalice. That's my starting point here. And then I want to be thinking about these removal spells. I get four of them innately just with the cards that I just cut, not thinking about anything else. I think the early interaction is very good, and then I just decide whether or not I want two more Fiery Confluences over, say, Blood Moon. Blood Moon on the draw is really slow. Stops Cradle. Like, that's not irrelevant. I think I'm more interested in Blood Moon on the play. But this may be me going a little too heavy on removal. Nope. I'm pretty much never going to keep a hand without a red source in this deck. <laughs> also, no. Like, Fury's good. It's not this good. I will go to five. Ah. It's really hard to have a not keepable five. This hand has no plan to win. The plan to win is draw both interaction and win conditions off the top of my deck with no manipulation. I will go to four. This is not great. This is the best hand that I have had so far. This goes back. This goes back. And I think I just keep the first playable card that I have. Um, that was rough. That was real rough. Because on, on four, we wanted Soul Land, Lotus Petal, any three drop. Mountain. I will play the Lotus Petal because I do not want the Lotus Petal Thought Seized. But it's awkward because now it's vulnerable to other things or like can telegraph to my opponent. Hey, idiot, play Collector Oof. It will wreck fill. All right. Do you have it? Nope. No immediate oof. But my opponent can get a Cradle. Um is spooky. All right. This at least gives me a real shot at doing something unfair on a timeline that is acceptable. My opponent will go and tutor up. Presumably Cradle. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, had a bad read on the opponent from last game. I did not necessarily... Hmm. Okay. Rexage? Rexage, yeah. Okay. So we are playing against Cloud Post, not Elves. Um, so I have sideboarded improperly. I do want those Blood Moons. Well. Well, well, well. Look who it is. <laughs> Fireflux squad here to fucking save my ass. Oh. All right. Here we go. Yes. 
Oh! Yes. This is 10 damage and a two turn clock. Holy shit. Uh, wow, that was big. That was really big. I'm, or, sorry, it's not actually a two turn clock. My opponent's at 12. Uh, Glimmer Post. I guess it's like Schrodinger's two turn clock. Because I can just Fire Flux Squad again. And some amount of the time my opponent dies. They also just die if I draw a sneak attackable creature. Uh, it is a green sun for one, presumably for a chump blocker. All right, there is a stage, which can then copy another cloud post. Table is a draw. I think I do spin the wheels on Fury. As in every time, except the one where I hit one of the three remaining Fireflux squads, I just get more damage or value by doing this. <laughs> yes. All right. So my opponent takes a lot of damage, going to two. And I think I just play out a Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. Got more than lethal next turn. We'll see if my opponent can make a big play. They've got the mana to Cloud Post and copy a land or other. So, like, they can make big plays on their turn. But it has to involve gaining a ton of life or otherwise putting some sort of glacial chasm in play or casting an all is dust. All right, it is a prime time. Glacial chasm and glimmer post. Absolutely. My opponent has to sack a land here. This is worded can't do damage, right? Or prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. Sure. Batter skull smashing. Not very interested in that. I think I loot both. Sneak attack is tempting. Or if I find like exactly Emrakul, but I think I just loot both here. Okay, I'm gonna attack with everything here. Because Fireflux Squad sometimes does very disgusting things. And I think I'm okay with losing Fireflux Squad this turn. Fireflux Squad will target this token. See what happens. Nice. So notably, the Archon here forces a sacrifice of a creature, and this does not prevent loss of life, it only prevents damage. So this does actually, in theory, kill my opponent next turn. Oh, ho, 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 nice. I will go ahead and go three mana for a Blood Moon, now shutting off a lot of my opponent's outs. I think they'll need all his dust. Um, I don't think I'm going to play another card here. I have... More than enough in play. All right, Once Upon a Time gets to look for something, but I don't know what that something is. Okay, this deck is sweet, folks. Okay, round three here. I'm on the draw. I have three mana, but no acceleration, so I'm not interested in this hand. I am interested in this hand. Pitching an Emrakul. Um, this hand is going to lead on Blood Moon in all light? Uh, well, maybe not. I have to think about it now. Okay. All right. So I know Artifact Mana is in my opponent's deck. There are probably, like, wheels in my opponent's deck. Could be the mono blue deck. Could be a colorless deck. Alice is going on zero after I play Lotus Petal. Feel pretty good about that portion of the turn. And then it's just like, do I Blood Moon my opponent? A little awkward. Feels like it might not matter, or it might matter a ton. I am going to play this turn under the assumption that my life total doesn't matter a lot. And play this in a way where if the Blood Moon doesn't resolve, I'm not just screwed. I can save myself two life by playing City of Traders, and if the Blood Moon resolves, like that's all fine and good. And if the Blood Moon doesn't resolve, well, I kind of fuck, trip all over myself. That's so good. Alice on one. Uh, that's not going to do anything against me, but my opponent doesn't know that. Now I just wait till I draw three mana, then I'll have Fable into Fireflux Squad. How awkwardly are we going to stare at each other this game? Very awkwardly. Right on time. Thank you. Top of the deck was generous here. Alright, so we do have a threat in play. 
and the ability to loot away this sneak attack. Um, we know Emrakul is currently on the bottom of the deck for what that's worth. No play for my opponent yet again. I am going to say yes to this. I'm always discarding this. I think I get rid of this trying to resolve Fireflux Squad this turn and just leverage my current advantage. Okay, yeah. So there's the squad. Oh, it's happening. Get a treasure. Yes. Okay, yeah. So this is the awkward double Fire Flux squad scenario where, like, I didn't just do something that killed my opponent. My opponent still is just, like, taking eight. And then I can have the Fire Flux squads target each other next turn, uh, which guarantees at least that much damage. Okay, yep. There's a Hull Breacher. My opponent can have... Yeah, okay, so they are the mono blue deck. So they get a lot of mana... But, you know, they can't play more artifact mana. They can pl they can do like a Karn into an Ensnaring Bridge, which would be a major pain in the butt for me. My opponent dies most of the time next turn. Not all of it, though. Okay, there is a Karn. All right, they are getting rid of my Chalice, which opens up more mana. Okay, sure. So then, is that, is that a Force? Force of Negation. Okay, there's another Echo, sure. Four mana. Uh-huh. Right, that is a new Karn. Legend ruling the previous one. Finding an Ensnaring Bridge. Okay. That probably gets a win for my opponent. Uh, actually, it doesn't. They have four cards in hand. All right, there is a new Chalice of the Void. That reduces their cards in hand to three. All right. I have something that can attack as of next turn. Guess I'll play this out. My opponent should just win, but mono blue deck isn't very good. And by that, I mean, like, it's not actually very good at winning the game. It's pretty good at not losing. Like, it's very good at taking game actions that make it look like it's doing things, but a lot of times those things don't matter. So, like, despite... Like, does this beat me? It doesn't beat me if my opponent ever passes the turn with four cards in hand. Oh. Like, this can attack here, for example. I don't think I give this up. Great for Hole Breacher. Like, I just kind of need my opponent to fuck up with some wheels. Sure. Okay, yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. My opponent just cast a card that put them to the point where I can attack again. Like, this is the sort of thing that I need my opponent to do for me to win. Okay, yep. Okay, Chromox solves their problem. My turns are not going to be particularly interesting. Now it's just fully on my opponent to lose the game to themselves. Okay, there's a plus on one of my lands. Again, not that big of a deal. Okay, my opponent has played a thing. A walking ballista. That is now a real win condition. A walking Ballista for five. Again, I don't think I win, but my opponent can't kill me yet. And my opponent is floating with this line of my Fireflux squads being able to attack. And if they're able to attack, I can just randomly put in an Emrakul that beats my opponent. Uh, yeah, no, I am not blocking that. Like, I'm absolutely happy taking that damage. I want this in play. I think. We're chilling. Alright, my opponent is going after my creatures. I'm not sure if that is correct. Like, they can just pump up the Ballista and then attack me a bunch, and I probably just die faster than if they try to control my board. It's probably moot. My opponent probably beats me either way. But I'm still just kind of playing towards them, messing up. Um, I guess with multiple creatures eliminated here, it's just worth conceding at this point. All right. So, blasts are playable. I want fiery confluence or assorted artifacts that I need to blow up. Blood Moon's not the greatest here. My opponent has a decent number of islands. <clears throat> Chalice goes on zero in this matchup, not one. I, in theory, want to board three more cards. How is Fury? 
Fury is a removal spell for Hole Breacher. I am trying to board in like Pyro Blasts and Red Elemental Blasts that do that same job though. I guess there's also a Braid. I can just have more instant speed interaction. And if I remove these, my Fire Flux squads, when they attack, are more likely to actually hit one of the big scary things. I think I'm okay with this. Um, it says no starting red mana. This isn't a very good hand. I think I still keep it. Probably pitching a city here. My opponent's not great at pressuring my life total. So I start with the Chalice on zero. And then beginning next turn, I will have a braid up at least in the short term. We'll kind of see where that takes us. I would love to just, yeah, not that. I would love to just draw a three drop that I can play this turn and then curve into a fire flux squad, but I don't always have that luxury. All right, that is a shock there or a spell bomb. Absolutely not interested in abrading that. Did he? Did he's okay. I want to play this and just try to force the spell bomb activation now. I think so. There's the squad. Oh, it's straight up blue elemental blast. Sure. Oh, okay. Nice. We got a just random card draw there. Ooh, opponent's missing land drops. I would love to draw a threat. This is not a removal spell until I have more red mana. I think I'm just going to play this tapped. Not paying the life. A little awkward. I don't have many red red things I need to play, but this will let me play a red thing while holding up a braid starting next turn. Eh. All right. Land pass. My hole breacher happens. I think I just let my opponent attempt to wheel and then I abraid. It's awkward if they have like four mana to go and like do that with backup. All right, Narset's in play. Narset minus is, I'll use this opportunity to kill Hole Breacher just so it doesn't keep attacking me. All right, new blue elemental blast just dropped. <sighs> okay. I may just have hit the fail rate of my deck here. Like I had some very, very, very strong draws. And here I've just bottomed out, right? Like I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I've had seven lands. Okay, sure. Narset happens. Finding LED. If it's LED Echo, I'll just concede for the sake of time here. My opponent has like two active walkers plus Urza Saga plus a full grip. I'm not going to beat that. But any creature this... Oh, okay, they don't have it. Any creature this game would have just pressured the hell out of these. Um, that's very disappointing. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna concede here. Like it'll take my opponent a while to kill me, but I think they've got it. Before we begin here, a quick thank you to Shakar, Cody T, Zachary Z, and Jacob N Y T for supporting my content via Patreon. It means a lot. For those of you that didn't hear, uh, there is a free to access article on Patreon. Anyone can read it, even if you're not subscribed. That talks about some of my recent life updates. All right, back to the show. This is an interesting hand. So it has a turn one chalice, which is like, eh, in Legacy. It has three mana. With a fourth mana, I can play a Fire Flux squad, but I really need to play two Fire Flux squads in order for one to trigger the other. But this card would be very good if I drew, say, a Fable. And if my opponent is on a creature deck, I do have Fury. I think it's not crazy to keep this on the draw, assuming that it will get better. But I think I'm just going to ship it. Uh, this hand is terrible. Wow. I mean, I guess this is what happens when you uh, do some of this stuff. On five, I will keep this. It still plays a turn one chalice. I'll pitch an Archon and an Atraxa. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to be good against resistance from my opponent here. Okay, um, that actually helps a lot. Please don't misstep this. Good. Put the uh, Atraxa under there. Put the fear in him. I will attempt a chalice on one, which I do not expect to resolve. Days occurs. I will try again next turn. Sure, sure, sure. So the scary world for me is the world in which my opponent 
lays a threat to this turn that gets under the chalice. They didn't have a threat on turn one, but they've looked at a couple more cards since then. Like a Dragon Rage Channeler coming down this turn would be really bad. Oh. Okay, didn't necessarily expect that after days. Uh, so chalice is my play again. All right, it's stuck. But I'm hurting after my mulligan here. My opponent presumably is on some just pile of good cards. Like some sort of four, three to four color control deck list. Okay. Yeah. Tempt Fable. That is a very good force of will from my opponent. It doesn't let me loot away this Atraxa, uh, which otherwise is going to be rotting in my hand. And we'll get some nice exalted action. Doing okay in terms of clock, but like very poorly in terms of resources. My opponent almost certainly has like prismatic endings. I can just take care of this at some point, and they should have plenty of win conditions. <laughs> uh, that just steal a game right out from under me. Okay, so my opponent is like a Bant natural order deck list. Got it. Yeah, there are prismatic endings. Uh, I am comfortable conceding to... Well, I guess I could draw exactly sneak attack here. But I think once my opponent... Oh, they just have force of will now. Or no, they took brainstorm. Okay, I guess I can put this into play. And pretend like I'm still playing magic. Again, this is another, so the attack does me no good right now. Uh, we're basically looking to spike Emrakul this game. Uh-huh. Good to know. Take eight because of Exalted, uh, which is Life Linky Vigilancy Death Touchy Damage. All right. No, that's that's cool. That's a that's a backup progenitus, by the way. All right. If I win this game, I'm gonna lose my fucking shit. Here we go. Double Fire Flux Squad. Send them in. Do these target each other? Yes, I will use this ability. Fuck. Yes, I will use this ability. That's a fury. Okay, that's not gonna do it. I am dead. I needed to hit, like, Archon of Cruelty and Emrakul there. Like, I had very high asks. But I had theoretical outs. Alright. Uh, I'll, I'll concede I am, I am dead on board to the Progenitus attack. But yeah, I could have hit Archon... Or a sacrifice, followed by Amrakul, and this would have gained me enough life to stay alive. Or something. Sideboarding's kind of tough. Like, my opponent has swords to plowshares and brainstorms, and I guess also technically prismatic ending. Some part of me wants to play this stuff to attack the creatures that they're going to natural order with. Part of me wants to just try to steal a Blood Moon win, because green green is required for natural order. I want to go that route. I'd probably play these three cards. Alice doesn't seem particularly good, but if I'm going to try to just race my opponent's turn for natural order, I kind of need Fireflux Squad to do its thing, and if my opponent can just say no for one mana, that's not great for me. I might just resubmit the main deck for the game that I'm on the play, and for the game that I'm on the draw, I get better at dealing with mana dorks. I think I accept that. Turn one, Urabrask's Forge, I don't think gets me there. Um, I'm going to ship this one. I have had some bad beats with mulligans here. I don't think this hand is keepable. Like, I can play a turn one Chalice and then it does literally nothing. I will go to five again. Wow. Uh, this is real bad. So this would be my five card hand. Turn two Chalice into turn three Fireflux Squad. Turn four, I maybe activate Den of the Bugbearer. Exactly one time. I don't know that I want to go deeper than this, uh, but that is pretty disappointing. Land go. I do not believe this hand successfully races natural order. Um, this hand can maybe beat my opponent if they're trying to play a controlling hand and do not have access to a counterspell. Alright, play that. I think play this out. Attempt Chalice on one. Get some sort of response from my opponent, I'm sure. Probably Brainstorm. Yep, alright. Yeah, I didn't even necessarily know if my opponent would force that if they had the opportunity to. 
It's like it's just such an easy prismatic ending target. All right, no attempt there. Uh, Force of Vigor is acceptable. Go ahead and play this out again. Playing around a potential daze, which would not be crazy given cards that I'm seeing. That's also why I played it out last turn. And here I'm at the point where if my opponent just has like a source of plowshares, I'm basically dead. Yeah. So now it takes a few turns, but I expect that I've lost this game. Like, this land is not really what you want to be relying on for kills in Legacy. And with City of Traders here, it's not particularly strong either. But my deck can do impressive things, and I will need it to. I guess a Blood Moon can just win me the game out of nowhere. That's not Blood Moon. Alright, activate Den. Crash in for some damage. We're mostly making this token so that if I draw Fireflux Squad, I can try to do something broken with it. Not because I expect the chip damage to be relevant. Okay, cool. We're not facing down Uro immediately, which helps a lot. I do this pre-combat. Kind of see if it gets a reaction from my opponent. There is the Daze that I played around last turn, but can't afford to play around right now because I lose City of Traders. But this means that I now can't lose this token to Endurance in combat, which is worth something. All right. Goodbye, token. Yep. It's scary for me if my opponent plays a white land. Float mana. Activate. Pay the life. Lose this city. Activate this. Oh, come on. That was around just about every removal spell known to man. <laughs> Except Hydra Blast and, like, Dismember. Taking out that Teferi while also just making more tokens was so important. Gross. Yeah, that Hydra Blast did so much work there. Very, very badly feeling the losses from my mulligan here, where I'm just down two cards. And, like, being down two cards in the face of my opponent's card advantage also just hurts. Ah, uh, yeah. There's an Ice Fang Coatl. I think this is the point where I'm realistically not in this game, but, like, I have sequences of draws that are just sneak attack into Emrakul, so it's not really worth me conceding. But, uh... Life's bad, folks. My opponent's confident enough to attack. Um... I think that's a no on my end. Those will have Death Touch soon. In case you're not super familiar with this, it's as long as you control three or other snow permanents. So my opponent has two others for each of those. Okay, yep. We are dodging my opponent hitting their land, uh, which is good, but uh, we, can, uh, we can comfortably concede to that. That's fine. Okay, um, this hand basically does nothing despite having a lot of mana and some things that are technically spells. Um, I will be mulliganing this. Um, this hand is respectable. I have to decide how I feel about Chrome Mox. I don't think I need to give up an extra card to Chrome Mox here. I think I can just pitch that and use Ancient Tomb and Lotus Petal to cast Fable and then cast Sneak Attack at some point later. If Sneak Attack's even still in my hand, honestly. Okay. If I were the opponent, I would probably take the Fable from this hand. I don't know exactly how scared of. Just like Sneak Attack, Emrakul they are. And if they have more discard, it's possible they take Lotus Petal and then take my Fable on turn two. But by similar logic, they could just take Fable and take Sneak Attack and just leave me with four mana sources. All right, they are going for the Sneak Attack. Uh, Chromox is an awful draw there. Um, in theory, Fable lets us loot that away next turn, though. We'll see. I don't know exactly what my opponent is doing. Probably a mono black helm deck after seeing Urza Saga. As of right now, I'm looting away Mountain and Chrome Mox. Blood Moon is an excellent draw that destroys Urza Saga instantly. Okay. Yes, get rid of Chrome Mox, get rid of one Mountain. Uh, those aren't great. Good that my opponent took this sneak attack. This costs four to activate. All right. I'm going to go ahead and crash in for some damage. 
and I think I'm chilling. End of turn, depending on what it's looking like over there, I can activate this. I think I'm more interested in this just being a mana source. A little hard to tell. Ooh, it's Black Saga Storm. It's not a mono black helm deck. In which case, I want the extra power on board from these immediately. The next turn, my opponent can like get an extra Black Lotus worth of mana. It's one of the first times that I've actually cashed this in for creatures on this channel. Right. There's some critters. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so good. This is so much pressure on my opponent's life total. Uh, they may die this turn. I have seven showing plus whatever Fireflux Squad floops into. Target one of my spirits. All right, what do we got? Yes. All right, it is just a Fireflux Squad, unfortunately. So it's a lot of damage, but it's not lethal amounts of damage. Um, Adnaz no longer looks good. Adnaz from five is not reasonable. Uh, but we'll see what my opponent can do. I am in no capacity assuming that this game is over and I have won. Right, there's LED. That was expected. And then I assume there's going to be a decent amount of artifact mana and rituals. And my opponent will activate Wishclaw Talisman and play something. All right. Infernal Tutor. I assume cracking one or both LEDs here. The red mana off Mox. Burning Wish. You're into the Abyss. Uh, you don't have enough mana for that. How many cards are in Graveyard? That's six in Graveyard. That's not seven in Graveyard. Oh, Bobble can be it. Yeah, uh, you needed to crack Bobble. Yeah. That was a very big punt. Uh, literally a game-losing punt. Yep. Okay. Um, so I know what I'm up against. Furnisphere is quite strong. Abrade is quite strong. I... Yes, Fiery Confluence is playable in two capacities. One as a Death Laser. One as an Artifact Destruction spell. I'm not super interested in Fury here, I don't think. Although it's pretty good against just the random Urza Sagas. Although, like, these four cards also are. If I board out Fury, my Fireflux squad hits are just stronger. And I'm probably looking to board in seven-ish cards. I could also board out the cute portion of the deck with just these cards. Um, what does that look like here? I cut the cute portion. I am two playables short. So I would leave in two targets for these, or alternatively two red cards to imprint under Chrome Mox. How do I feel about this? Which two do I leave in? These two? This one forces a discard and additional life loss, whereas this one is just 15 damage. This one can't be imprinted. Possible I'm just supposed to play these two cards as things that can just bounce a construct token. And I just assume that four power hasty creatures will kill my opponent if I stop them from doing other broken things. And it's kind of whatever. It has a chalice on zero, but then does nothing else. But basically any top deck is very reasonable. This is the sort of hand that would just lose to fair Urza Saga stuff, though. I think I can do better than this. Uh, this is not better. Wow, I cannot get a decent mix of lands and spells here to save my life. Uh, yeah, I will go to four. One, two, three, four. I kid you not, this is the best hand so far. And it's not close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not the best versus Thoughtseize, but like, what do you want for a multi four, right? Okay, you can see my top card. All right, no immediate play from my opponent, uh, which is cool. All right, my opponent knows about this mountain. I will cast a Chalice on zero. And I believe, despite the fact that my opponent knows about the mountain, I just play Shatter Skull Smashing to get that card out of my hand because this is a Thought Seizable land. And I don't want to have to pay the life for it later. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, we take that. In this situation, I probably just play a Chalice on one. I don't know. I can just loot through this, though. Just loot through this and try to find a more impactful card. 
yeah. This line l actively leads towards me killing my opponent, and the Chalice line doesn't. I'm going to try to take advantage of the fact that they're duck and put a threat into play, and if I draw, like, a Fire Flux squad, it becomes very strong. Okay, yeah, that's just discarding an artifact. Um, actually, now I could just play Chalice on two. Yes, let's use this ability. I think I bend both lands and see where this takes me. It takes me to Blood Moon. I don't need to play that immediately. All right, yeah. Crash in for two. Opponent drops to 18. Putting this on two disrupts the various tutors that are available to that deck. I'm a little confused why my opponent kept their hand. Like, they didn't have a turn one Thoughtseize. They... They didn't have turn one interaction. They didn't have a turn one kill. They were soft to Chalice or Trenosphere. Like, I won on a Mulder. I think that was four? Uh. Well, that game brings us to a 3-2 close on the League. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Not bad. Like... Urabrask's Forge or Fable of the Mirror Breaker into Fireflux Squad was incredibly powerful, and I liked it a lot here. That said, I mulliganed a spectacular number of times during this league, and I got paid off for those mulligans in many situations by, like, powerful hands that did the thing, but if you kind of compare this to a, like, more normal Red Prison decklist or rather Moon Stompy deck list. These cards would be something like Caves of Chaos Adventures, which could win the game on their own without requiring another card here. And these four cards are cards that normally would be three drops, sort of vastly changing the curve. So these four cards adjust your curve in a weird way and are essentially non-castable cards that you have a backdoor way to use but they really take away from the initial turns since they are going to be worse with your Chrome Box. I don't know ultimately where that leaves me on this deck list. We did put up positive results, but I think we only put up positive results because my opponent punted their last round. Like, if my opponent casts that Cabal Ritual, they can peer, and all that required was checking the number of cards in their graveyard, and then they win game one. And I think they should have mulliganed their game two hand. And if they mulligan their game two hand and thought sees my fable, all of a sudden, like, my hand becomes very noticeably worse. If I were to play this again, I'm not exactly sure what changes I would make. The sneak attacks weren't super relevant in this league. Maybe you can get rid of those and just play some other enabler or some more lock pieces or something and just say, like, okay, if I draw one of those five cards, I draw one of those five cards. Um, but at the same time, like, this is something that you can use as bait. And if this does resolve and you do draw one of these five cards, like, cool things can happen. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very on the fence about this. The sideboard might be skewed a little bit too much towards Artifact Hate with, like, four cards going towards that. Um, but the metagame is still young, so it's, it's hard to tell. Sideways, shaky, slightly thumbs up from me. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot. If you have any thoughts about the deck building, throw them in the comments, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day. See ya!